So this is another really important machine. I don't think it gets enough credit for what it does. This didn't make the top ten list on the video watch. Uh, everybody wants to get, you know, everybody in their machine shop, they gotta get a bridge board or something, but they forget about this guy. Okay. Look at all these shocks he's got. I've I have some friends that are machinists and they're gonna a lot of stuff here. Lots of stuff here. Right. You can do a deglaze here. seizure mark wasn't it yeah the front one it would have been in this cylinder but I don't see the mark here anymore it came out that was to get a little hiccup right there where something was mm -hmm. you know it's a spot it dug in but it's not marked on the piston no it doesn't matter it's just with pressure okay. <clears throat> okay these were the coarser finish you're supposed to use for your finish. These are, the, these are the finer ones here. So these were the grit that they wanted us to use these days for honing. I call it coarse as a damn corn cob. That's what I call that finish. 
that's what they want us to use these days though. You're gonna put a finer finish on that right? That's what they say to use. Well, people in hell say you know, say some things too. <laughs> yeah. It's still working. I use kind of a mixture of stuff, but one of the tricks I do is I use the super fine. These are way above 600 grit. So I bypass my other ones. three swipes instead of two swipes. Okay, so you still have the marks down in there. Now listen. Mm-hmm. It didn't do it. Ouch. My horn. A lot smoother. So that's a plateau cut. So we, we took the tops of the peaks off with a real fine cut. And we still got the, the core stuff in the bottom to hold the oil and lubricate the ring and all that crap they want you to do these days. And you got to kind of do this stuff because the new gasolines don't like the mirror finishes in it. Because that stone, when I clean it all, when I, if I hone this all the way until it's clean, you'll see yourself in it. With that stone? That you got? Yeah, it'll be. It's pretty shiny. Tetra, do you remember? I don't know if you remember, but when we were Kawasaki rounds racing those bikes, the 125s had a chrome bore. Yeah. One ring piston. Yeah, well, two strokes don't have oil rings, yeah. so. They only had one compression ring all they were running. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the same finish here. So now, see, it doesn't have a real rough finish like it had. Mm -hmm. But it still has the grooves and stuff to hold the oil. So that's how they want you to do it. The other thing is the angle, the crosshatch angle. The longer the stroke, the more they want you to stand up the crosshatch. So instead of being here, they want you to be more in this area. But not 90. And I'll hire the RPM, but this one's kind of more like a more of a stock stroke type phone, but it's close enough. On my bike, I run a little bit coarser finish, but it's a lot finer. It's a lot coarser than I used to be. I run up a little bit finer finish than this. I'll actually use that other stone, the one we skipped. Yeah. This is 600 grit stone, I'll use it, which is a this is 600 stone, which is like a 500 grit. The other stone's a 500 stone, which is like a 380, 420 grit. These ones here are just, this is the finest thing they make. That's, mm -hmm. It's super, super fine. You're not supposed to use them for cylinders, but eh, whatever. I have my theories. It's been working pretty good. I've been using braking oil. Also, it seems to help a little bit. Something I never used to use. So. Molly rings are the worst thing to make seal. They don't like the seal. Chrome actually works the best. Okay, that's a 17 stone, which is the real, it's the finest one they make. blocks with. I like these old obsolete the best mandrels. Why is that? I get a better hole, straight hole. You're supposed to use these little short ones over here. Mm-hmm. No, no. And the fanciest ones are the uh, double stone. These ones. These are, these are what you use for keyway, for cutting keyways and stuff. But I can't get a straight in this hole. It works good for cutting over the open, or going up as fast as that groove. It doesn't dig in. These will dig in if you go out too far. You catch on that, it'll rip the stone off. Try okay. to rip it out of your hand for some okay. reason. But I get a better finish. I've got a straighter hole with these. And that's why I use these. Ones. Even I haven't made these things in you know, 40 years at least. So you can see it's getting worn out. So I can write it right OK, 
I just want to knock off the high spots, which is really going to be high spots because the electrodes are worn. So you only see the top ring where it's even hitting. I'd actually have to hone these out a little bit more to make them get new area. See, I doesn't cut very much electro. Right there, you can see a little bit of it, but not much. Give it a couple more strokes. What are you, what is it doing? Chewing up everything. Just got to leave and finish all the way across now. Yep. stone was cutting real heavy here and here and not in the real middle so that's that's making a whole hole just like this so I, I could feel it if I hone enough I, if I had something to work with I would hone it out but we don't have any words this is the finish we're doing right now we have time to finish it out so this is the way of making it do it uh, way of cheating the system now this should cover the better now we're all back up on it That's how they wear. You see the low spots, real pretty heavily low there still. Damn. All the way around it's low. See all the scratches going up and down sure. on it. That one's pretty crappy. This one's pretty low too. It's just normal. That's how they wear. Yeah, look how around it is. <laughs> this is low, low, and it's honing right on the side. You know, that's why you have oversized lifters, just like doing oversized pistons. You re you set the boards new again. We don't have those, we only get standards, so we can't keep holding it forever. So I just knocked off the burrs, and that's the best we're going to get for that. Well, in Texas, we just go up to 80 weight of oil. <laughs> we don't make 80 weight, 70 weight, see if we can get it. Lying to me again. 80 weight gear oil is not 80 weight motor oil, so. I know. All right, so now I got that done. We're running out of stuff to hone over here. Good. I have to work on these now. What you need? My special tool. See how it's taller than all the other ones? Mm-hmm. Because I will the two of them together.
Right. I took two real long ones and welded them together. I welded a tip on here also so I can turn it. Make it even. That was the easy part. Then I had to make a wedge. I had to weld the wedge together. <laughs> that was harder. The wedge is what molds the stones up and down. Then I have to cut the stones every time also too. So you have to cut the stones. Here's one of the brushes. How'd that find its way in there? I thought you were going to try to chuck that in there. It's been there for 20 years. I never <laughs> used the damn thing. So I had to cut the, this away here to fit in this because I had to modify that. So I have to modify stones. So two stones you don't have to modify until you do. <clears throat> then we have a finding course. So you look at the number to see which one's which. Or you just look at the finish on it. That's fine. That's coarse. See the difference? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. So these are about half worn out. So the one to cut down goes in here, because that's where the stone is modified. Or the wedge, I mean. And you have to put them in after the stone's in because you can't put the wedge, you can't put together if the stones are in there. It won't go in the machine. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. And it works good. Because now, instead of having to see the stones only this long. So if I stone from here to here, then only this much of the stone gets used. Right. I just understand that. This part in the middle. Doesn't. Doesn't. So every time you, you hit a high it, spot there. You get a real high spot. With this one, I can go all the way from here to here. See, I'm stroking across the whole stone face. Sure. So the stones stay nice and true. The bushes stay nice and true. Because every time you bump into the high spot, this would barrel, barrel mouth on you. I understand. So that's why when I do the bushings, it's they're real accurate. I take a brand new rock, give it a couple strokes, pull it out. You can see how the, the reamer marks are in there. Nowhere near. You only get like 10% contact on a new Really? Person. Horrible looking. Versus me, you'll probably get 80% contact or better. Now, this is the dangerous part because these are out around, so they like to come around and nail you, especially if freshly ground these, so they're nice and sharp. It makes it hurt more. that indicate? You get an idea how much wear there is. That's a load? Of how much is pulling? Or? How much is stones opening up? I understand. It's the wear of the stone and the bush and the bow, so it's now one or the other as well. So it's not 100% accurate, but it gives you an idea. After a while, it gets pretty even. Right now, i got to put two more off. There should be two more thousand. That's a harmonized number of stone and the leaf of stone hardware. You see, I stroke across the whole stone. Right. Rock out 
twitching too much anymore. Yeah. It's already round. Pretty round. Pretty close, they're plus or minus five, or you don't know. When I get closer, I can tell the difference. Are you going to assign each one to its particular? Yep. I hold for a shot. Individually hold too. does vary depending on the application. Well, obviously in a hot rod motor I'll make it slightly easier than a standard low with a high level street motor. No matter what, they're way tighter than the brand new rod there. Up to half market. What you repeat what you just said? No matter what? They're a little tighter than what they come from the out of market. The out of market is made for a standardized side to put any shaft into it. You got a tight rocker arm, you can't get on the shaft, but it works. It would lock up on the shaft and then come back. That's right. There's a lot of customers who beat it in with a hammer and it goes down. Beat it in with a hammer and call it good? Yeah. It'll, it'll hone itself out and <laughs> run it dry for a second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to be back in just a minute. All right. Okay, back to the finishing. Okay, I got the fine still in there. already finished up a couple. Okay, so this is the finish we have right now. So we'll show you, you see what that? I couldn't see very well. We'll show you what that looks like in a couple minutes here after I do this. Give me 50 weight oil gap. See, si, senor. Oh, 
squish a little bit, shaft yeah, in a little bit. Whatever clearance that is. Tight, they'll stick on you when you're running the bike. Yeah, you can't hear them loose right now, but I can actually feel a little bit of clearance, but it's tight. There's probably only a thousand clearance we got on this thing. It's pretty tight. Okay, so I'm gonna go clean these up. You can look at the ones on the rock on the shelf over there already that I did. Over here. So grab the tripod, set it up, and you put those two together. Don't mix those up though. Okay. Those are clean. You can see how the lifted blocks look. I can still in them also. Okay. Recording? Yes, sir. Lights off. Okay. Keep going. There you go. So, see the finish? I can't see. Yeah. Smooth it is. Mm -hmm. It's also really, really straight. If you look at the reflection, it should be a nice, even reflection. If it was uneven, it wouldn't reflect very well. Just like looking at a paint job on a car. You can tell just by looking at something whether it's straight or not. Obviously you want no binding. See the clearance? Mm-hmm. Can't really see it though. See, we're out this far, you should see a lot of movement. See, there's almost no movement. That's how tight it is. But they won't bind up. So that's how tight you make them when you do them up. Now after marking, when you stick in there, they go rattle, rattle, rattle back and forth a lot. They don't, they don't hold anything. Hear the noise? So, that's how close you do this stuff. Yeah, they all sound about the same. They're all the same. It's hard to measure something this close. This one's slightly looser than the other ones, but not that much. These are the lifter blocks here. You can see the wear marks on those things. Looks like a heavy sandblast finish in there. Yeah, put that where you can see it. Yeah. Here you hold it. That's the worst one. This one's a little bit better. Yeah, this one looks better. When you do the lifter, they were sitting here. Mm. Just take them and hide them? Nope. They were here. They're not here now. You probably took them back and hit them from me. Let's go see if we can find one. Oh, I know where they're at. Where are they? They're being cleaned, soaking. There's one tight one still left. Look at the bore on uh, those. Let me put the camera and see it.
Good stuff. Is one still in here? Yep, the bad one. And these work nice and free now. See that? Mm. Flip them over 180, do it again. They should roll for a little bit if they're good and clean. If they don't roll like that, they're bad. Don't use them. They all work good. Now this isn't a good test for fitment because they don't run down here. They actually were up in here is where they run. But see, in the lumber left, you got something to grab a hold of. These ones are so short, I can't check the fit. But what I can feel, I don't really feel any clearance. So their size is pretty tight. But they're obviously not tight because they're nice and free. So. All this still has to be cleaned some more yet. So you want to be nice and free like that. And they are. All right, so those are good. These have to be all cleaned up a lot better, but you can see the cross hatch in there, the angle. You can see the coarseness in the bottom, but you can see the fine on the top. So you feel how smooth they were? Mm -hmm. They're like they're broken in already. But they are already broken in. <laughs> yeah. I put the 500 miles on them already. There you go. It's built in 500 right there. Okay, we'll get all the stuff cleaned up. I'll be back. Okay.